And back here at home, the president's critics are unloading on him for meeting with authoritarian foreign leaders like Kim and Putin. And they talk about historic moments. This is historic. Him going to uh, North Korea is like Chamberlain going to talk to Hitler. Donald Trump is so eager for a deal that he will settle for half a loaf or even a quarter of a loaf, which will leave North Korea with nuclear weapons. I think he envies these dictators. And one of the things he envies about dictatorships is they control the press. Okay, let's bring in former Obama campaign foreign policy advisor David Tafuri and former deputy national security advisor to President Trump, KT McFarland. Welcome to you both. Thank you. All right, I want to start today with a tweet that comes from the man who's hoping to unseat the president next year. Former Vice President Joe Biden says this, not one missile or nuclear weapon has been destroyed. Not one inspector is on the ground. If anything, the situation has gotten worse. North Korea has continued to churn out fissile material and is no longer an isolated pariah on the world stage. KT? <laughs> Well, that's coming from a vice president whose president had a strategic doctrine with um, North Korea, which was strategic patience, in other words, to not do anything. Um, when I started with President Trump, the first thing we looked at was North Korea and what were the options. And there were very few options. All the good ones were long gone. And one of the things that we understood was that this would always end up being a personal diplomacy between Trump personally and Kim personally. And I think what Trump has done is he's gotten leverage. When you talked about those pictures and some of the people who have criticized Trump say, well, look, he's giving him status. He's, he's like respecting him on the world stage. That's exactly right. And here's why. Because... Kim is now seeing life in Singapore. He's now seeing life in Vietnam. He's now seeing what future might hold for him, not just for Kim, but for his leadership. And if all of a sudden nothing happens, Trump walks away. He calls him Rocket Man again. Kim is invested in this. And the same way that in 1972, there was a picture of Richard Nixon and Mao Zedong, who was, pre who was a prime, um, president of China. And the two of them, by shaking that hand, it gave the signal to all the Chinese people things had changed. We now have a good relationship with America. They're now our friends. We're going to have peace and prosperity. And I think those pictures of Kim shaking Trump's hand, the ones you're showing right now, they're sending a signal to the North Koreans. And if Kim doesn't deliver on this, then I think he may have potential problems with his own leadership cadre. So about that relationship, David, we talk a lot about how this president is very relational with people, including a lot of people uh, that folks don't think he should have any relationship with, or at least not one that looks this friendly. But Vox today writing this under the headline, the one big benefit to Trump's diplomacy with Kim Jong-un, and they go on to say minimizing the chance of war is nothing to scoff at. I'm not saying that Vox is, you know, big fans of the president, um, but at least in this article, they're saying give him some credit for that, would you? Well, I don't think we've minimized the chance for war yet because North Korea hasn't rolled back its nuclear weapons program at all. So the visit to North Korea by President Trump, him stepping into North Korea was historic, but there was no historic achievement along with that. If U.S. negotiators and North Korean negotiators had been working together since the last summit and then this visit was to try and encourage them to continue, that would be great, but that's not happening. There's no negotiations going on at all. Meanwhile, as Vice President Biden tweeted, North Korea is continuing with its, with its nuclear weapons program. It's even done missile testing, short-range missile so it's advancing. And we've rolled back some of what uh, North Korea finds offensive, like our uh, joint operations with South Korea, to prepare for an offensive by North Korea. So this is really worrisome. This is a real gambit by President Trump. I'm not going to be too negative yet, because maybe something will come out of it. But Katie McFarland said that President Trump has all the leverage from this personal relationship. But so far, the leverage has not resulted in anything. Okay, Katie, I'll give you a chance to respond there. I mean, is there not a concrete thing the president can point to and say, we got this in return. You know, I, I think the, the thing to understand about Trump is that it's a negotiation. It's a process. Okay, so maybe he hasn't gotten anything yet. He's gotten those meetings. They've talked to each other. But that doesn't mean that the negotiation is finished. That doesn't mean that the process is done. I think Trump has gotten him where he needs to have him, which is Kim now feels like he's one of the big boys. He's in the big boy club. He's met Trump. He's, he's talking to the South Korean president. He's seen the Chinese president. Trump can pull that rug out from under him in a minute. 
And once that happens, then I think it's a very different situation for Kim. Now, look, it's, is these are great options? No, none of these are great options. Those are gone 15, 10, 20 years ago, even with North Korea. This is the only one I can see that ends up getting us where we want to get without having to have military confrontation and without having to have a significantly more difficult situation with China. All right, KT, David, thank you both for weighing in. Great to have you. Thank you.